We, the Jesus Christians, are being officially targeted and accused in Kenya of having contributed to the deaths of hundreds of people there in what is known as the Shakahola incident, where over 400 people, mostly women and children, were apparently coerced and forced to either starve to death or be killed by vigilantes belonging to a religious group led by a man called Paul McKenzie. In fact, a Senate ad hoc committee in charge of investigating what happened at Shakahola is recommending that we Jesus Christians and anyone promoting our teachings be expelled from Kenya and barred from ever entering the country again. Kenyan media has gone further, claiming Dave and Sheree Mackay, founders of the Jesus Christians, actually started Paul McKenzie's organization, Good News International. The committee advised that the DCI and the Department of Immigration investigate with a view to deport any persons affiliated to a religious grouping known as Jesus Christians or a voice in the desert linked to Dave and Sherry McKay, who are believed to be behind the setting up of Good News International Ministries led by controversial self-proclaimed preacher Paul McKenzie and that they are involved in organ harvesting and the sale of human organs in the black market. But there is a lot more to the story than meets the eye. And in this video, we will not only show that the Jesus Christians are being falsely accused based on lies and distortions of the truth, but we will also reveal one of the key players behind the false accusations and how all of this fits in with coordinated attacks that some opponents of the group are making against us because of strong disagreement with our Christian beliefs and practices. The Senate Ad Hoc Committee has assumed that the Jesus Christians are guilty, and they have asked the authorities to, quote, investigate with a view to expel from the Republic of Kenya any foreign person or entity advancing the doctrines or activities of the entity, group, religious outfit known as a voice in the desert, also known as Jesus Christians, connected to one Dave and Cherie Mackay and their associates, and bar their future entrance into the Republic of Kenya within 30 days of adoption of this report by the Senate. So, Anyone promoting any of our teachings must be expelled from Kenya? Why? On what information is the Senate Ad Hoc Committee basing this decision? They only give one paragraph of information about it, and it says the following, quote, Information availed to the committee established that Paul McKenzie was influenced by Dave Mackay and Cherie Mackay from Australia who are founders of a cult movement known as a voice in the desert. The teaching of this cult include forsaking all private ownership, surrendering earthly possessions and relocating to an isolated communal place where members serve one master. The foreign links were largely established through virtual links and social media. However, in 2019, Paul McKenzie hosted an associate of Dave Mackay, who gave a sermon in his church at Makongeni, within Nairobi City County. The guest speaker delivered sermons echoing anti-government sentiments, specifically Huduma number being the mark of the beast. He also urged followers to abandon earthly possessions and follow Paul McKenzie to the Promised Land, which was later located in Malindi. At first glance, it sounds very serious and thoroughly researched. But what if I told you that this information is not only demonstrably false, but that it did not come from an investigation on behalf of the Senate Ad Hoc Committee at all? Rather, it was given to them by someone who purposefully and maliciously intended to defame the Jesus Christians. And what if I told you that we have a pretty good idea of where that information came from. But before we speak about the source of the misinformation, let's examine this key paragraph, the one on which the Senate Ad Hoc Committee is basing their decision. The paragraph starts by saying that this was information availed to the committee. In other words, 
This was not information that the committee found through careful research. Instead, it was given to the committee by someone. The Senate Ad Hoc Committee gives no explanation as to who the source is, nor where this information can be verified, though we shall talk about the source later in this video. To our knowledge, the Senate Ad Hoc Committee did not reach out to Dave and Cherie Mackay, nor to any member of the Jesus Christians in any way for clarification or confirmation of these shocking allegations. It does not appear that the committee invested any time in corroborating the information with other more reliable or reputable sources. As we will show in this video, it is evident that the Senate Ad Hoc Committee was just handed a paragraph of information and then, based solely on that paragraph, the committee has made this extreme decision to request that all foreign members of the Jesus Christians be expelled and barred from Kenya. But let's keep reading. Quote, Dave Mackay and Cherie Mackay from Australia are founders of a cult movement known as A Voice in the Desert. Now, the use of the word cult is intentionally prejudiced so as to immediately ascribe negative connotations to the group. In the same Senate Ad Hoc Committee report, we see the following definition being given for cult. Quote, cult is a system of belief directed towards a particular figure or object. For example, a self-appointed leader, prophet, or someone with lofty titles. The Jesus Christians do not fit this description. Ironically, it is an official teaching of our community that we do not use lofty titles for anyone, whether inside or outside the group. And our system of beliefs is directed exclusively towards the teachings of Jesus Christ. If this makes us a cult, then it makes every church that claims to follow Jesus a cult as well. Applying the term cult to the Jesus Christians is derogatory and appears to be intended to maliciously prejudice the Senate Ad Hoc Committee and the public against the Jesus Christians even before hearing or seeing any actual evidence. The report goes on, quote, The teachings of this cult include forsaking all private ownership, surrendering earthly possessions, and relocating to an isolated communal place where members serve one master. Now, as viewers of our channel would know, we Jesus Christians do teach and practice forsaking private ownership and possessions in obedience to the teachings of Jesus and the practice of the early church regarding this topic. For example, you can read passages like Luke 12, 33, Luke 14, 33, Luke 18, 22, Matthew 13, 44 to 46, Mark 10, verses 29 to 30, Acts chapter 2, verses 44 to 45, and Acts chapter 4, verses 32 to 35, for clear biblical texts that support this teaching and practice. These are valid Christian teachings that have centuries of religious tradition and have been practiced by many Christian communities throughout the centuries, including Catholic orders like the Franciscans, as well as some Mennonite and Anabaptist communities. Therefore, the Jesus Christians should not be discriminated against on the basis of our practice of these teachings. However, the Jesus Christians do not teach that Christians should relocate to an isolated communal place. In fact, because all Jesus Christian communities are dedicated to evangelism, they are located in populated urban areas and Jesus Christian members engage daily with the public. The statement about relocating to an isolated communal place is a deliberate distortion designed to link the Jesus Christians to Paul McKenzie's decision to isolate his followers within the Shakahola Forest, something that has no relation to the teachings or practices of the Jesus Christians. The comment regarding where they serve one master is also a deliberate distortion of the teachings of the Jesus Christians. The Jesus Christians teach what Jesus taught in Matthew chapter 6, verse 24, that says, 
No one can serve two masters, for either he will hate the one and love the other, or else he will be loyal to the one and despise the other. You cannot serve God and mammon. Jesus taught in Matthew 6 verse 24 that we can only serve one of two masters. He says you cannot serve both God and mammon. Mammon means money and everything that money can buy. The author of the information given to the Senate Ad Hoc Committee purposefully and maliciously distorted this teaching to give the impression that the Jesus Christians teach that people should go to an isolated location like Shakahola to serve a human leader like Paul McKenzie, something that is totally opposed to the real teachings of the Jesus Christians. The report also says, quote, the foreign links were largely established through virtual links and social media. The fact is, Dave and Cherie Mackay have never had any contact with Paul McKenzie, whether by email, social media, phone or in person. It is ridiculous that Kenyan media is now claiming that Dave and Cherie Mackay actually set up Good News International when they have never had any contact with them or with Paul McKenzie. The report continues, quote, In 2019, Paul McKenzie hosted an associate of Dave Mackay who gave a sermon in his church at Makongeni, within Nairobi City County. It is true that a member of the Jesus Christians gave a sermon at Paul McKenzie's church in 2019. This is about the only factual information in the paragraph from the Senate Ad Hoc Committee. But is this sufficient basis to condemn the Jesus Christians? Does any priest or pastor who preaches at any other church beside their own denomination bear the blame for anything taught by that church years later? One of us preached at Paul McKenzie's church four years before the Shakahola incident. None of us had any idea that Paul McKenzie would one day teach such a thing, nor did we know much of his teachings at the time. One of us was simply invited to speak on a particular topic. And that is what the Jesus Christian member did, just as he would have at any other church who had invited him to preach. In fact, afterward, neither the guest speaker nor any other member of the Jesus Christians had any further contact with Paul McKenzie or his church. It is ridiculous to argue that having preached at a church automatically makes one guilty of everything that church does four years later. Quote, The guest speaker delivered sermons echoing anti-government sentiments, specifically Huduma number being the mark of the beast. This is a distortion of the facts. The guest speaker did not express any anti-government sentiments. His comments were related to Christian doctrine on Bible prophecy and its relation to the avoidance of a particular technology on religious grounds, something that is within any individual's freedom of belief, supported by the Kenyan Constitution and by the Universal Declaration of Human Rights. The guest speaker did not at any moment say that the Huduma number was the mark of the beast. What the guest speaker said is that Huduma number was a step closer to the mark of the beast. That's a very important distinction. In fact, the guest speaker clearly mentioned several times in the sermon that the mark of the beast was a future event, not something that had already happened in 2019. When the mark of the beast comes, it'll be even bigger consequence. When the mark of the beast comes, it says you cannot buy or sell. My brothers and sisters and I uh, from around the world, we also feel that the Huduma card is getting us closer to the mark of the beast. It is getting us closer to the mark of the beast. Concern regarding the Huduma number was not unique to the Jesus Christians. Many people were concerned over privacy issues and the Huduma project was later rejected by the Kenyan High Court. So why are the Jesus Christians being unfairly targeted as being anti-government now due to comments they made about the Huduma number more than four years ago? 
Also, the teaching about the implementation of something called the Mark of the Beast is not unique to the Jesus Christians. It is a well-established Christian doctrine shared by many churches. Therefore, this fact alone about the Jesus Christians believing in the biblical prophecy regarding the Mark of the Beast and its association with cashless payment systems should not be used to persecute the Jesus Christians. Doing so is a clear violation of religious freedom and constitutional guarantees that people will not be persecuted for their religious beliefs. The report continues, quote, He also urged followers to abandon earthly possessions and follow Paul Mackenzie to the Promised Land, which was later located in Malindi. This is patently false. At no time in the sermon did the guest speaker urge followers to abandon earthly possessions and follow Paul Mackenzie to the Promised Land. Not once did the guest speaker urge people to follow Paul Mackenzie to go anywhere, nor to follow any of his teachings. Instead, the guest speaker repeatedly told the congregation that they must follow Jesus Christ in preference to imperfect human leaders. So then my message today is very simple and very clear. The teachings of Jesus is the only foundation that any one of us can build upon where our house will stand. When we stand before God, we will not be able to hide behind a church. We will not be able to hide behind a pastor or a pope or a preacher. We will all stand as an individual before God and he will ask us, what have you done with the teachings of my son? When we stand before him, he says in John 12, verse 48, My words will judge you in the last days. So when we stand before God, we have to give an account to him based on the teachings of Jesus. So what I'm asking for today is for people in their own private prayer closet to speak to God themselves. Not with others, just yourself. You talk to God and you ask him to show you his will through the teachings of Jesus Christ. Because those are the teachings that will save us. The teachings of Jesus Christ. Those are the teachings that will save us. Once again, it is clear that the information which the Senate Ad Hoc Committee was given is not only false, but that it was deliberately and maliciously designed to spur the Senate Ad Hoc Committee and others into persecuting the Jesus Christians. Furthermore, the false information given to the Senate Ad Hoc Committee was deliberately intended to imply that the Jesus Christians radicalized Paul McKenzie with religious extremism. As the defamatory article in the Nation newspaper says, quote, Mackay and his wife, who are leaders of the Jesus Christians group, have been accused by a Senate committee of inciting religious extremism in the country that led to the deaths of over 400 people in Shakahola, Kilifi County. This accusation by the Nation newspaper, if not by the Senate committee, is patently false. The Senate Ad Hoc Committee report clearly defined the terms religious extremism and radicalization as follows. For religious extremism, they said, it is a radicalized viewpoint that appropriates the use of violence to force, promote, perpetuate defined ideologies, for example, Al-Shabaab, Boko Haram, and ISIS. As for radicalization, the Senate report says it is a process of encouraging individuals to develop extreme views and beliefs in support of a terrorist group and their activities. The Jesus Christians do not fit either of those definitions. We do not promote violence and we do not support terrorists. In fact, we are a pacifist group like the Quakers. We actively promote love, peace and non-violence. Therefore, the Jesus Christians should not be accused of religious extremism, nor of radicalizing Paul McKenzie, nor his church, nor anyone in Kenya, nor anywhere else for that matter. Since the definitions the Senate Committee report has clearly given for those terms definitely do not 
apply to the Jesus Christians. In fact, it can be shown that the deaths that occurred at Shakahola did not come as a result of what the Jesus Christians actually teach or practice. Rather, it is apparent that the deaths of Paul Mackenzie's followers have come as a result of Mackenzie's own private teachings regarding a false return of Jesus, claims that fasting to death will guarantee entry into heaven, and implementing coercive and violent measures that did not allow people to leave when they were not in agreement with his teachings. None of those practices which directly led to the deaths of so many people in Shakahola have any relation to what the Jesus Christians teach and practice. So blame should not be unfairly put on the Jesus Christians for something we have not had anything to do with. In fact, if Paul Mackenzie and his church had actually followed the teachings and practices of Jesus and of the Jesus Christians, they would all still be alive today, participating in a vibrant community that would be dedicated to preaching the gospel in all the world, just like the Jesus Christians do and are doing right now. There is no real connection between what the Jesus Christians actually teach and how we actually live and practice our beliefs and the teachings that led to the deaths of all those people in Shakahola. Any attempt to make the Jesus Christians responsible for the deaths at Shakahola is unfounded, extremely unfair, and, in our opinion, constitutes a case of religious vilification. It is clear then that I have shown that the information from paragraph 128 on which the Senate Ad Hoc Committee based its decision to request that Jesus Christians be expelled and barred from Kenya is false and was designed to maliciously defame and persecute the Jesus Christians by blaming us for something we never did, nor did we support or participate in. This is in clear contradiction of Articles 27, 32 and 33 of the Kenyan Constitution, which aim to protect freedom of conscience, religion and speech. As cited in the Senate Ad Hoc Committee report, quote, Article 27 of the Constitution on Equality and Freedom from Discrimination prohibits discrimination on various grounds, including religion, and ensures that every person is entitled to equal protection and benefit of the law and that no one should be discriminated against on the basis of their religion. Yet, here we have a clear case of the Jesus Christians being discriminated against because of our religious beliefs. The report says, quote, Article 32 of the Constitution provides for freedom of conscience religion, belief and opinion, and stipulates that every person has the right, either individually or in company with others, in public or private, to manifest any religion or belief through worship, practice, teaching or observance of a day of worship, prohibits denial of access to any institution, employment or facility, or the enjoyment of any right, because of the person's belief or religion. Yet, the Senate Ad Hoc Committee is requesting that Jesus Christians and any foreigner who is associated with them be expelled from Kenya and denied access to the country. The report also says, quote, Article 33 of the Constitution on the freedom of expression protects the freedom of expression, which includes the freedom to manifest religion in worship, observance, practice or teaching, either individually or in community with others, and guarantees the right to propagate, preach and disseminate religious beliefs. However, the Senate Ad Hoc Committee wants to ban the Jesus Christians from Kenya simply because one of our members gave a sermon at Paul Mackenzie's church about our religious beliefs four years before the Shakahola tragedy took place. The Jesus Christians are simply not responsible for the false teachings and coercive practices that Paul Mackenzie appears to have implemented four years after one of our members preached there.
Now, since the source of the Senate Ad Hoc Committee's information about the Jesus Christians is dubious, and the information itself clearly false, misleading, prejudiced, and maliciously motivated, we request that the Senate Ad Hoc Committee retract their decision regarding the Jesus Christians and ask that the authorities in Kenya publicly clear the Jesus Christians in relation to the Shakahola incident and make public who the source of the misleading and false information is. The person responsible for this false information can and should be prosecuted criminally, not only for misleading the Senate Ad Hoc Committee, but also for religious vilification and persecution of a religious minority. Since these lies about the Jesus Christians have led to us being further defamed in the media, all media outlets who have added false information in their reports and do not issue a clear retraction should also be prosecuted for defamation and religious vilification. So now, let us consider the source of the information in the Senate Ad Hoc Committee's paragraph. A few months ago, in April 2023, when the Shakahola incident came to light, an Australian person, who shall not yet be named for legal reasons, who has spread disinformation about the Jesus Christians and has been actively working with other people to find ways to cause legal problems for Dave Mackay and the Jesus Christians, informed a member of the group that the Kenya media was accusing Dave Mackay of having caused the Shakahola incident and of being involved in organ harvesting and the sale of organs in the black market. Of course, all such claims regarding organ trafficking and our involvement in the Shakahola incident were nothing but lies. Yet they were the same kind of lies that this same Australian and the people they have been working with had already been trying to spread about the Jesus Christians. It also seemed coincidental that they were letting us know of the article only hours after it had been written and published. This Australian person was referring to an article written and published by one Simon Wangi Muthiora on April the 26th of 2023. Now, some Kenyans may recognize his name as he is a Kenyan blogger and has a following on some social media platforms, including a Telegram account that purports to be the official account of the Nairobian newspaper. Simon Mwangi Muthiora wrote an article titled Exclusive, Pastor Mackenzie, The Untold Story of the Controversial Preacher and His Encounter with Police. This defamatory article was published on his Facebook account, the aforementioned Telegram account, and on some independent online tabloid media sites. The defamatory paragraphs in relation to the Jesus Christians in that article state the following. On May 19, 2019, Mackenzie invited a foreign guest speaker who encouraged the congregation to abandon all their possessions and wealth and to follow their master, Mackenzie, who would lead them to a promised land in Malindi. The foreigner further told the congregants that he supported Mackenzie's teaching against the Huduma number introduced by the government, as it was the mark of the beast and evil. The foreigner urged the congregants to watch a YouTube channel called A Voice in the Desert. The YouTube channel has been associated with Dave Mackay and Cherie Mackay from Australia, who were founder members of a cult movement called Jesus Christians later end time survivors and subsequently a voice in the desert. The teaching of the cult includes forsaking all private ownership, surrendering earthly possessions and relocating to a communal place where members serve one master. Dave is linked to human organ harvesting and the subsequent sale in the black market through his program Kidneys for Christ. As you can see, these defamatory paragraphs full of false accusations against the Jesus Christians relate directly to the false information that the Senate Ad Hoc Committee was given. We have almost a word-for-word -word exact copy of the lie about teaching people to serve one master, just like the Senate Committee's paragraph. 
There is also an almost word-for-word -word exact copy about urging the congregation to follow Paul Mackenzie to the Promised Land in Melindi. In fact, virtually all the information used in the Senate Ad Hoc Committee's paragraph as the basis for why the Jesus Christians should be banned from Kenya can be directly linked to Simon Wangi Muthiora's article. It's all based on lies, lies and more lies. It appears that the Senate Ad Hoc Committee did not investigate anything about the Jesus Christians. They were given false, misleading and maliciously motivated information and they ran with it. This appears to be a case of religious vilification and religious persecution. And because of that, Kenyan authorities have a responsibility to expose and denounce their source and to clear our name. The last sentence of what I quoted from Simon Wangi Muthiora's article most shockingly accuses Dave Mackay of trafficking in human organs. This lie contributed to a panic in the Kenyan media in April and May of this year, with many claims that the Shakahola victims had had their organs removed. However, because the organ harvesting theory in relation to Shakahola was so obviously ludicrous, this particular accusation against the Jesus Christians was not included in the Senate Ad Hoc Committee report. Yet, the Nation newspaper has tried to revive this lie about organ harvesting in their most recent defamatory article about the Jesus Christians, saying, quote, In May this year, documents filed at the Milimani Law Courts in Nairobi indicated that some of the Shakahola victims may have had their organs harvested before they were buried in mass graves. This is a deliberate attempt to resurrect something that was a false narrative to begin with. There were no organs harvested from Shakahola victims. It is an absurd claim that lacks any reason whatsoever, as you cannot even use organs from a starving victim. The whole premise was false to begin with, and a deliberate attempt to link and vilify the Jesus Christians by distorting the facts. Contrary to what Simon Wangi Muthiora published, and contrary to the article from The Nation, the Jesus Christians have never been involved in organ harvesting, organ trafficking, nor any other illegal activity involving organs. What the Jesus Christians have been involved in is altruistic live kidney donations. That is, some members of the Jesus Christians voluntarily and freely donated a kidney to someone who needed it, a practice often called a Good Samaritan donation and praised by reputable hospitals and health organizations around the world. Just because a large number of people in a group have done a good thing doesn't mean that they're crazy. I mean, just think of the cynicism in that, thinking that they're crazy, that they're a cult, you know. As far as I know, what they've done is done good for other people. Such donations were not done secretly, nor in suspicious circumstances, as the Nation newspaper so falsely stated. They were done at some of the most prestigious hospitals in the world, often being done in front of documentary cameras from established news and media companies. Distorting such altruistic donations into lies about organ harvesting, organ trafficking and other crimes is not only serious defamation, but reveals that people who are misreporting such things are not interested in the truth. They just want a sensational story to sell at the expense of serious long-term consequences for the Jesus Christians. As such, we are experiencing a clear example of religious persecution there in Kenya at the moment. Now, we have good reason to believe that Simon Wangi Muthiora was not acting alone in defaming the Jesus Christians with his articles, but that he was given false and misleading information by an unidentified overseas source, which we believe came from an Australian citizen. In any case, it is clearly demonstrable that the information given to the Senate Ad Hoc Committee about the Jesus Christians is false 
and can be directly linked to Simon Wangi Muthiora's original article. If he did not invent the false information himself, he could certainly help authorities by revealing where he got his information. The Kenyan authorities have a responsibility to interview Simon Wangi Muthiora to find out and reveal who his source was. The Senate Ad Hoc Committee also needs to be open and transparent about who availed them of the false information they have used to persecute the Jesus Christians. Now, we do not believe it was Simon himself, but rather his Australian contact who pointed them to Simon's article, which has since been deleted from his Facebook and Telegram accounts. Now, given the questionable and misleading nature of the Senate Ad Hoc Committee's decision about the Jesus Christians, we urge a retraction. We call on Kenyan authorities to publicly clear the group in the Shakahola incident, reveal the source of false information, and prosecute the responsible party for deceiving the committee and for religious persecution. The serious defamation and religious vilification at the hands of Kenyan media must also be seriously investigated and prosecuted. In closing, for those of you who are genuinely interested in what the Jesus Christians actually teach, I recommend you click on the video that is on screen right now. God bless you and thank you for listening.